Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. And today, back in the office, we're going to be taking a look at the 9600X and the 9700X from AMD. Now, I was lucky enough a few weeks ago to be invited to the AMD Tech Day to go and learn about all the 9000 series. Uh, well, it was a deep dive with architecture, actually meet the team that uh, designed it and I won't say built it, but you, you get the kind of gist that I'm on about. So I was very uh, lucky to be invited and I am very grateful as well. But because of that, what we're going to do now is, because I, I always end up getting people tell me there's too much blue in the background, is we're going to put the new 7 and 5 up on the shelf and maybe, if I'm lucky, we'll be able to put some other ones up there later because we are only looking at the 9700X today and the uh, 9600X. Others, hopefully, will be coming later. The NDA for reviews, if I'm lucky to get any of them, uh, is going to be on the 15th. Today is obviously the 7th, and so this is what we're going to have a look at today. Now, the 9600X, I do know that the price is going to be $279 or 269 of your great British beer tokens. The 9700X comes in at $359 or 339 of your great British beer tokens. Now, the fact that the GBP price, including VAT, is still under the dollar price, I think is something that we do need to give a good uh, thumbs up to because they can be quite uh, close because people always think because of the exchange rate they should always be less but we do need to remember that the uh, VAT going on top when it does come into the country can make even the matching a difficult prospect so those prices are all very nice now the 9600X is six cores and 12 threads because it does have multi-threading 5.3 uh, gigahertz uh, boost as a maximum but we noted in our testing that we were looking at about the 4.9 4.95 mark as a multi-threaded boost as in all of the cores fully enabled 9700x 5.4 maximum uh, boost slightly lower multi-core boost we noted on this one of being around the 4.7 mark they were being loaded uh, uh, for us to take those results with Cinebench 23, and you will see results for that in a bit. Um, 24 is an incredibly stressful benchmark, so sometimes they could have been a little bit less than 24, but we, with the older generation, we noted them in 23, so we carried that forward uh, with these as well. Now, weirdly, it's something I do want to get across from the start, as we are just looking at the processors today. No new motherboards. There are going to be eight X870 and X870 boards coming later, hearing possibly sometime during September, which is a much later date than this. And I, although the uh, processors are backwards compatible, if you were going to be jumping in buying a new system now, it does mean that you've got to buy technically last generation's boards and I think that's a very new place for us to be uh, put. So the review board that we're using today is uh, actually last generation's X670 um, MSI ACE. That also means because we haven't got any new boards or anything yet I've put it into the old test rig, which is a Be Quiet case. You've got Be Quiet 360 millimeter AIO, Be Quiet power supply. We have put in it into all of the old stuff. The only thing that we've actually changed in reality is the memory, because there were some hints that we might need some faster memory. So we've tested with uh, the old G-Skill 6000 kit, but we also have some G-Skill 8000 megahertz memory which I'll talk about in a bit, um, that we've added into the test suite. So uh, slightly confusing. It would have been nice to have been looking at motherboards and stuff now. It's definitely going to be something that I think all of us overall need to be keeping an eye on the market. Uh, but from my gut, uh, I do want to talk to you about kind of board matching possibilities moving forward. Now, uh, 
people are going to say straight away about um, uh, temperatures and stuff because the IHS, the bit of metal on the top of the processor, on this, they made it thicker so that it worked with the uh, older chips. That much material on the top does create problems and the older gen were quite warm. Now, uh, when I was away, AMD did say they've done an awful lot of work trying to bring down the thermal resistance of the actual silicon itself. I think it was 15% less thermal resistance, which should equate to about seven degrees less temperatures. Um, but the IHS itself, it's better, but it's still not perfect. And uh, as I will talk about with uh, the temperature graph, we're using a 360 millimeter Be Quiet AIO. It is not the latest and greatest 360, but neither do I expect somebody at home to be using the latest and greatest 360 millimeter AIO when you're buying a high 200s or early 300s processor, unless it's something that you're just kind of bringing in from an old system. Let's face facts, Acer's have got pro uh, coolers out there that are more money than these processors. Uh, but you are going to need to invest in a good cooler to get the best from these. Now you'll see in the graph, it didn't look too bad, but we were using OCCT and we've been using OCCT for a very long time. I'd actually go as far as to say OCCT is pretty much going to be what you can expect from a reasonable gaming session nowadays. If we were to use Cinebench 24, for example, the uh, 9600 was mid to high 70s and the uh, 9700 actually started to get into the 80 degrees marks if you run that benchmark for any more than a, a more than one run in reality so they are very capable even with a decent spec AIO and some high speed fans of getting up there into the 70 and 80 degree mark. The 97 was fairly easy to put there, if I'm honest. But one of the things I do want to stress is AMD state 95 degree and up to that point is normal operating temperatures. And it will always be trying to optimize and push itself as far as it possibly can do until it starts to get to those uh, kind of temps. So we could probably have dropped our fan speeds down somewhat to let the temperatures come up. But when you're reviewing a new product like this, you don't want to have it on the bleeding edge, but maybe temperature performance is something we'll look uh, into in greater depth at a later date, because we, this is something that I can tell that the entire industry is going to be investigating quite thoroughly. Power. Yeah, they said it, like we did think, because it's now four nanometer, we did think it was going to use less power. But in our testing with the 7600X, it used less power than the, the 9600X. And weirdly with this, and it was something that we went back and checked cons many times, our 9700X technically used more power, sorry, the 97 used less power than our 96. It was only a couple of watts, but it was there. Um, so uh, power, but with a couple of watts here and a couple of watts there, it doesn't really uh, matter too much. Um, uh, temperatures, as I've said with OCCT, did look good. But when you use uh, move on to multi-threaded stuff like Blender or um, Cinebench, especially the latest one, it will make them get hot. Uh, I would suggest personally, again personally, but it's with a cooler, I would invest as much as you possibly can do. There are some very strong models from Arctic Cooling out there that don't cost a lot of money. But if you get a better cooler, it's going to mean you're going to be able to run your fan slower, keep the same performance but have a nicer, quieter environment by the t while you're sat beside it. If you're just going to be gaming and you're always going to have headphones on, ignore what I've just said, knock yourself out. Now, performance, we did say Blender. Now, Blender, with these, both of these, massive improvement. You can literally see 
the uh, uh, 97s there, it's kind of up there mixing with the 17900 X3D when you look how close they are together. But the steps down, it's like three minutes difference with the, um, the 9700X. And then you are looking at a fairly similar sort of time. It's two minutes in reality, nearly three minutes with the 9600X. Now, this is a, a custom OC3D blender. I think it's something retarded, like 7 million polygons. Um, it is a very, very stressful and long-winded blender run. It is not one of these quick ones that takes like 15 or 30 seconds. That is how many minutes it takes to do it. Now, the big number is our 4K run. The smaller number is the 1080p run. So you can see how stressful this is on a system like this. Uh, well, on any system. Um, Cinebench R24. We haven't got many uh, results in this yet because we haven't been back and done lots and lots of back testing for this specific uh, one. We are just going to let it evolve over the next few years. But these are the results that we've got for the 14,000s uh, and now the 9,000s. So you can kind of get in there, have a look, pick about. But I think something to remember is the 97 isn't the top flight processor. So we will get to see how this kind of compares later on. So with the Cinebench 23, that's the one that we want to have a look at. Big graph. You're going to need to get in there. You're going to need to pick it apart. Uh, this is a clear improvement from previous gen into new gen. You can obviously go in there and see and pick apart the uh, against the competition as well. Um, but uh, this game specifically, because I know a lot of you are going to be looking at uh, me for gaming performance. Now, the reason why I'm showing this, and there are lots more results on the OC3D website, so please head over there if you want to go and have a look at more stuff. But... Uh, Final Fantasy Benchmark does love memory speed, and that's why I've added it. Because if you have a look, the 9600X with the 8000 megahertz memory literally just trumps its way to the top. Now, sadly, I didn't run this benchmark on the 9700X, uh, and I didn't realise until just before coming to uh, make the graphs and stuff, it was a bit of an oversight, but it will be added in for the uh, next batch of stuff whenever I get to review those. Uh, it's weird having to keep saying that. But anyway, this is one of the games that does show that memory performance does matter. This is also something that I do want to say is uh, we have looked at memory performance on it. Now, 8,000 meg megahertz memory on the 14,000s from the blues is something that you did need a overclocking board for. And by that, what I mean is you needed like the Apex from Asus because it's only got two slots. It's much closer to the CPU. It was lots less stressful. Um, you could get away with it with some ITX boards because they've only got two slots and they're only really, really small anyway. But the length of the traces makes the difference with very high speed memory. We never did get the Ace to do 8000 megahertz memory way back with the 7000 series processors. But on this, it was quite as easy as enabling XMP. So that, I think, is a very important uh, factor to consider when you're specking a rig. But 8000 megahertz memory is very expensive. So it is just worth knowing that it can do it, but you also need to be, um, you do need to remember that it's going to cost you an awful lot of money and not all games do respond to it like this sadly. Uh, so that's one that did. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy was a mixed bag and this is another good thing to kind of bring balance is we all expected uh, the X3Ds to be fairly strong but when I was away what uh, AMD did say is they were expecting some of the performance to be on par with uh, the previous gen 3D results but with non-3D processors this time. Well, Guardians of the Galaxy definitely doesn't show us that. It shows a very um, uh, positive benefit towards the previous 3D gen processors. But this is going to be something that I think we are going to need to keep an eye on moving forward, and it will probably be very game specific. Um, so that was a negative one in reality, but I think it did you know, need to be uh, noted. 
But we've had a negative one. I'm now going to balance it out with a positive one. This is a Dolphin 5 emulator. Now, all of these processors have just romped to the top. That emulator absolutely loves the 9000 series. Just, it's beaten everything. So uh, I can't really say any more than that because it's, it's just a win outright. And I hope that the newer ones or the higher up the rank ones are just going to make things uh, even better still. Now, deep breaths. Um, very price aggressive processors. Decent amount of performance as well. Um, if you've got a 7000 series, like if you've got a 7600X and you're looking to go 9600X, I probably wouldn't bother. But if you're, thinking, if you're in the fives looking to upgrade, literally go five, miss 5600X, miss 7600X, jump to 9600X, that definitely makes sense. Same with the sevens. I don't think that the 7700X um, moving up to a nine. 9700X is really viable. If you're going to go next one up or something like that, then maybe. And the only reason why I'm saying that is just out of balance. Um, I'm not putting AMD down, you're not saying anything like that. I'm just thinking about your wallet. Uh, if you were looking to buy a new board though, I do think that if and when they ever come out and you're looking to really build a very cost effective budget system, the X840s, whenever they appear, might be a viable option for the 9600X. The X840 isn't going to do uh, any CPU overclocking or anything like that, but I don't particularly think that's really needed with the 96. X850 does give you some abilities with stuff, uh, and I think that's where the 97 might fit. But I've just realized I haven't really spoken to you about overclocking. Um, and if you had a look in the graphs, what you'll see is we had some PBO um, uh, numbers and stuff like that, so precision boost overdrive. Now, both of these processors are 65 watt parts, and you can see by the results that there were some very decent positive changes for precision boost overdrive with the 9700X. I'm going to tell you now that the 9700X is so horrifically power limited that you just by enabling the precision boost overdrive, it is an entirely different processor. They're literally strangling its neck when you fit it and just run it out the box. So please, please, if you buy a 9700X, make sure you enable Precision Boost Overdrive. It is one of those clickbait, horrible videos, free performance here, just do this. It is like that. Just as long as your cooler can cope, and I'm pretty sure it will be able to, but if your cooler can cope, enable Precision Boost Overdrive. If your cooler can't cope, then in time, your cooler is the thing that you want to upgrade. Get it on there, help keep that processor that little bit cooler, and it will boost and you are going to get such a healthy upgrade. It's for one click stuff, it's just a no brainer. Within the, um, the software, yes, you can do auto overclocking and stuff like that. And there is some marginal benefits, but precision boost overdrive literally is just click, done. You're not stressing anything out. It's just giving it that little bit more power to do what it wants. And in reality, that is exactly what it's doing. It's doing exactly what it wants once it's got enough power. Now, deep breaths, have a little drink of water, I wish I could, but really, really nice, positive things about the first two from the 9000 series processors. I look forward to hoping to get in my hands on the uh, higher core rating ones. Please remember, to like, subscribe and comment. If you've got to the end of the video, then you definitely deserve a Cherry Bakewell and you can tell me in the comments underneath. Please tell me if you like my review style, if you like the data. If you don't like the data, there is loads more on the website. Are you happy we're back in the office? But I am gonna thank you all for being here. Uh, there will be more videos uh, very soon and I'm looking forward to seeing what more AM Brie I am Brie. <laughs> I've got cheese on the brain. Um, Brie, get it? French? It's because I've been watching the Olympics. Um, what AMD brings to the table.